Great. So welcome everyone. As you know, this is our monthly My Speaker Business Community call where all of you, you know, we always invite an amazing guest and we have an amazing guest today with us that's going to inspire us and give us a lot of concrete hints. And, you know, these sessions are really for you to learn from an outstanding speaker to get practical hints and tips from our guests that you can apply right away. And you can also ask your personal questions on how to make your own speaker business and your speaking flourish further. And, you know, it's also the time where you get the opportunity to exchange with other speakers and get help and support. If you have any priority projects, um, mention them here. Or, you know, I know that for some of you that are calling in from the US, it's morning, so it's breakfast time. For a lot of us here in Europe, it's lunchtime. And you know, some of our Asian uh, participants that are often with us, for them, it's dinner time. So again, you can just join us and have a break with us and get inspired. Well, as you know, we make these sessions very interactive. So ask your questions anytime, uh, either in the chat or, you know, and uh, I have our guests as well to keep an eye out on it. Uh, to make sure you get all your questions answered and then we can, we can also spend a little more time at the end to address any additional questions you might have. Also, you know the technical game, please mute yourself so we have a sparkling recording and, you know, keep in mind that we are recording this session so if when you show up, you will be visible, we will record you, but I think you're going to love that because you're all speakers and you want to get even more visible every day. So what is our topic this month? We will talk about the magic of psychology and how to use it to bring your speaking and your, your business to the next level. And you all know that, you know, this world has changed and keeps changing. We're living in times of digital revolution and there's a lot of disruption and, and technical, uh, you know, uh, yeah, advancements made which means that we as speakers need to make sure that we became relevant, right? That, that we remain relevant. And how do we remain relevant? By building deeper emotional connections and create a lasting impact on our audiences and our clients. Well, today we talk about what are the psychological phenomena and mechanisms that you can use to create lasting impact on your audience and your clients. And also we talk about how can you use the psychology of payment to raise your fees, right? So who is our amazing guest today? Well, his name is Dr. Frank Hagenau and he's a good friend of mine. Frank and I met when we, the first time when we, were, uh, when we were meeting in Namibia last year at a Plan B Summit, which was supposed to be the Global Speaker Summit. But even at that time, things had changed already. And, uh, you know, so let me introduce you to Frank and get to know him so you get to know him a little bit better up front already. Who is he? Well, he holds a degree in psychology and he also studied leisure and tourism sciences in Hamburg, Germany. Although right now he doesn't live in, in uh, Germany at the moment, he lives actually in beautiful Venice. And he's also an author and expert on leadership and he's given a lot of different speeches and workshops for executives and work with top managers as he also offers amazing coaching programs. And he's also had, you know, had, he, under his belt, he has a lot of years of psychology consultant and, you know, being a tax psychology consultant and a directing manager. And he also has, you know, is known as, uh, you know, he has holds an international recognition as psychologist Europe Sci, and you know, everyone that knows the speaking world, you're familiar with a certified speaking professional, the highest nomination in the speaking world. Um, so he holds the CSP um, you know, uh, title as well. But there's so much more to say about him. You know, he's been all over the world with his speaking with this world in China, Singapore, obviously in Namibia, in Iceland, and so many other countries. Well, I'm sure you want to find out more about him, but I know that you're even more curious to, uh, to tap into the magic of psychology and how you use it in your speaking and your business. Hi, Frank. It's great to have you with us today. Well, thank you so much, Monique, for this nice and warm 
introduction. Uh, in a long time, I haven't had that much pressure. Thank you very much <laughs> for raising the bar. So I'm, I'm really, really happy um, to be with you here. And I think we are a really, really small group. So uh, we might uh, start with just a little asking, what are your expectations? Why have you shown up here? What do you want to get? And maybe you would also share some uh, points of your business. What are you right uh, doing now? I just heard from Sheila. She's in New York with, with the, the chapter of NSA there. Um, and maybe we will start with one short round um, about your expectations and who you are. Uh, well, let me begin, uh, since you mentioned my name, Frank. Yeah, great. Um, uh, I am uh, I'm a, a relationship coach and intimacy expert. I, I talk about issues of love and, and connection. That's my topic. I talk about being in love, falling in love, staying in love. And uh, so, of course, in terms of where I'm coming from, I work with people all day, every day in my private practice on issues of Certainly the ultimate psychology is the psychology of, of intimacy and connection and belonging. So I want to hear what you have to say as it might help me be more effective in the messages I bring in, in the speaking that I do. So that's a little, a little nutshell. Great, thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, Doug, you are on, uh, the next uh, on my screen. So would you like to continue? Thank you, Dr. Frank. Doug Brinker from Michigan, Jackson, Michigan, USA. I am a suicide prevention speaker that I speak to veterans, active duty and youth primarily. And I help transform lives and give hope by sharing my recovery story of two attempts 22 years ago. And what I'm looking forward to is how I can connect on a more deeper emotional level with my audiences. And it's an honor to meet you and have you here on our call. Well, thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> okay, we will see what we can get there. Okay, and Christiane, is it Christiane, right? Would you like to continue? Sorry, unmute. Yes. Hello. Um, I work in the world of business software and you might think there is not much psychology there, but that would be wrong because in most organizations, there are computers to process the data for invoicing and accounting and other things. And there is a real problem because um, the managers don't know how it works and they are trying to hide their ignorance. And I'm trying to help these people, but there is a problem. <laughs> so my main problem is I'm trying to help people who don't want to admit that there is a problem in their organization. Yeah, that's a tough job. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay. Mm. So, and what are your expectations? Uh... Oh, well, I've been, uh, Taking, I've been listening to Monique Bloxel now for months and every week, every week I learn interesting things. So I came here and I thought, I'm sure I'm going to learn something that's going to be useful to me. <laughs> so you're raising the bar once again. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Anything uh, from you, Monique, to add? You're on Microphone. mute. Ah, okay. Her microphone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I just, I was speaking and you know what? I mean, we speakers sometimes need to mute ourselves because we always speak, right? <laughs> Anyhow, so um, yeah. So first of all, I mean, I'm just here to, you know, make sure that F1 and of our community really takes the greatest value away. But you know what? Every single time for me, Frank, I learn tremendous things from our guests. So, you know, I mean, obviously your topic is exciting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always exciting um, to get a glimpse into what my people in our audience think. Okay, what might be going 
on behind their forehead, right? And again, I think, you know, I mean, that's what we cannot learn more, enough about psychology and what's really going through our minds and hearts of our audiences, our clients, because if we want to serve them best, first of all, it comes with understanding, right? So if you want to create a lasting impact with our speaking and as entrepreneurs, well, we want to know what's happening in people's minds and hearts so that we can help them to step up to a different level and really step away from being the hidden gem to become an outstanding board leader and grow their legacy business, which is pretty much what we are doing here at our heart powered business. So yeah, great. Frank, we're all excited to hear, you know, what do you have to share with us? <laughs> Yeah, okay. So without further ado, um, I would like to get into this uh, topic um, because my idea um, is that, uh, as you all know, we are working um, um, with audiences. And the question is always when we show up for, let's say, one hour on stage, how can we stay in the minds of our audiences, uh, in the minds of our buyers to be remembered, uh, not only for the next day or week, but maybe for the next months or even better years. So uh, we have a longer lasting impact um, on our our audiences and of course um, it's about negotiating higher fees so how can we uh, negotiate higher fees and i will uh, give you a few examples how i deal with the situation this is not a recipe for uh, doing almost everything um, but it might give you some ideas how i work and i would like to show you these examples first and then in the second step i would like to take you behind the scenes and uh, have a look at the psychology and about my ideas how i crafted and what i thought about um choosing these examples um and the first first question uh, for me is always uh to deal with prejudices about psychology because as a psychologist you always are mostly confronted with with three three um prejudices uh, one is psychologists are always analyzing you so beware of what you tell and uh, you have to be very very careful because they also can tell uh, by your clothing your your sexual preferences for instance um, which is true by the way but the second the second um, prejudice in we are always dealing with is this soft skill attitude psychologists are connected with so it's all about love and being kind and nice and heidi didi didi and not about so much business and uh, and the other thing uh, the last the last prejudice is that psychologists only studied psychology because they are themselves crazy and want to treat themselves in a way. So um, the first step for me is always, why should manager listen to me? Um, and uh, the first question is, where can I um, get the connection so they are willing to listen and invest their, their time? And um, my approach is always I grab them by their, well, important parts. <laughs> it's the money thing, yeah? And um, about money, telling about um, money. Um, and let me um, shift to my, my slides here. And I think I can also um, drop down a bit here in the corner. Just a moment. Here we are. Um, and so my question is always, why should they listen? And it's about money because um, I tell them that every third employee is unsatisfied with his or her boss. And, uh, and this leads to costs. And there is a, a Gallup study 
um, which is, uh, well, done in uh, Germany, I think, two years ago. And they came up with a number, a number 105, and this is the number 105 billion euro loss and this is a, such a huge number i always have to imagine how many zeros are followed this there are nine zeros followed by the number and this is the the loss annually in germany only because of unhappy and unsatisfied employees because these employees uh, they are doing lower performance, um, their, uh, the absence days are rising, and often they tell uh, their buddies about the dump they are working in. And so uh, maybe also qualified people won't apply for, the, for, the, uh, for a job at this company. And so um, when I um, talk about this money issue, there is always a big ear for, for managers because, of course, they want to save money or not uh, spend as much as they probably do. And so uh, the, the, the question is always, um, how can I get to their emotions? And uh, uh, Monique, just, you, you just mentioned it. Um, if we are able to connect with the emotions of our audiences, this always means we got a better chance of having a deeper impact. And I um, talk about trust and um, why it is well worth to invest in trustful relationships. And I give an example from my own, my own past. And this is the time from the time when the the tall Frank, you don't see me in in full size now. Um, but if you would see me on stage, I'm uh, one meter 90 height, which is uh, 6.2 feet. Uh, so I'm uh, really, really tall Frank. So. <laughs> and uh, I will I will refer to the time when this this tall Frank was just a small Frank, you know, um, and this is uh, in the late 60s when the little Frank um, lives together with his parents in a small, small flat in Hamburg and uh, they don't have much money and so they can't afford very, very uh, much. But there is one attraction in this in this um, apartment and this is a TV set. It's black white because they couldn't afford uh, a color TV and the, it takes five minutes to start because uh, it's such an old, old television set. But it is the attraction for this little Frank. And there's another thing. It is a TV journal. And in this TV journal, this TV guide, there are these these marvelous movies announced um, which are going to be shown on TV. But the little Frank has got a problem. And <laughs> this is uh, the little Frank can't read yet. And uh, he doesn't know the clock very well. And uh, as you might know, in Germany, the, the, the time is shown in, in four numbers. And uh, so the little Frank is not even able to understand these cryptic numbers he sees in the TV guide, um, which announce the, the, the time when the movies are shown. One thing is quite, quite clear very early to the little Frank uh, that the really important and the really interesting movies, they are always shown around a specific time. And this is 20 double o'clock. And 20 double o'clock is the time when the great movies 
are shown. And here is the next problem for the little Frank. If only he would know whether 20 double o'clock is a time when little children are still allowed to watch TV. So what do you do when you have this huge lack of, of information? Of course, you refer to this enormous source of wisdom. You refer to mommy. Mommy does not only know the clock quite well already, but she is also able under certain circumstances to give you a permission to watch TV. And so mommy is the first, first source to refer to. Mommy. Yes, little Frank. Mommy, I've looked into this TV guide. Mm hmm. Mommy, I've looked into this TV guide. Yes, little Frank. And what did you discover? Mommy, there is a movie with, with, with cowboys and Indians. It is shown and I would love to watch this movie. May I watch this movie about the Indians and the cowboys, please, please, pretty please? Hmm. When is it shown, little Frank? Uh, 20 double o'clock. <laughs> little Frank, 20 double o'clock. This is far too late for you. This is so late, even Mummy and Daddy won't watch this movie anymore. Really? Yes, this is far too late. Everybody is asleep when this movie is shown. From my today's perspective, I ask myself, why didn't I stumble about this obvious fact that everybody is asleep when these fine, nice movies are shown. But in these days, I took comfort from this, this explanation of my mother's and uh, I was living in this perception that 20 double o'clock is still a time universe which is which is far beyond any any of my imaginations and then it happens one day the little frank wakes up by something and he is shuffling still almost asleep into the living room of his parents. And there is this big TV movie party in a full swing. There is mommy, there is daddy, there is wine, there are candles, there are crisps, there is good mood. And in the te television set is running the movie from 20 double o'clock. And you can imagine how this was for this little Frank. This was some kind of betrayal I felt, you know, because my mother obviously lied to me and I couldn't have imagined that even before because I thought my mother uh, will always tell the truth. And so this was my my last day in paradise of, of trust and 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 um, well, thinking of my mother uh, won't won't tell a lie to me. And from this moment on, I was really, really skeptical about almost everything my mother told me. Um, and I thought maybe even this guy, there is something even wrong with this guy. Maybe he doesn't even exist. And so um, it's down to trust. And for me, trust is the resource of the future. 
And um, this is something which is also happening often in business, that people in business are using mind games or psychological trickery to well to reach a, a goal on on the short short term perspective but they won't be uh having in mind uh, that they will uh, sacrifice the 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 relationship the trustful relationship and i'm i'm sure you know it from your own um, experience professionally or privately maybe as a child or as a grown up or even as let's say a matured personality that if we feel betrayed if we feel manipulated um, if we feel used or even misused um, abused the relationship isn't anymore as it has been before and it never will be again and so my approach is to leaders um, that, it, of course, it's not easy to build trust because trust is something which rises in your counterpart. This is nothing you can build actually, um, um, well, um, deliberately, um, because trust rises in your counterpart when, when he or she um, decides for herself that you are trustworthy. So trust can't be built, trust has to be earned. And um, so the, the, the question is always for leaders, what can I do? And, uh, and one approach is, okay, you can build a climate where trust can grow. And um, well, if you want to invest in building trust you can ask yourself as a leader um, maybe from tomorrow on what could i start doing or what can i stop doing um, and my advice uh, because after all trust couldn't be built uh, in this way um, it's it's a good first step uh, to to stop using mind games and psychological trickery because this is something which destroys trust and sometimes it takes a lifetime to build trust and even a blink of an eye to to, to destroy it um, forever um, and the the issue how managers or persons are well Accepted or received as, as trustworthy is often how they deal with difficult situations. And so um, I talk a lot about ethics and, and decency um, because people have a really deep inner longing for trustful and reliable relationships. And uh, this, is, this is no, no difference in the business or in in private life so um the the question is always if everything is fine it's quite easy to stay decent and um treat people um respectfully and um stay away from any any trickery but if the going at the if it's if it's getting tougher and uh, you uh, get into stormy weather and you have to make difficult decisions um that's that's a, a different cup of tea and so i would like to share with you because this is something i also share with with my audience um a little tool um for really really tough decisions so I'm not talking about the decisions which are usually difficult, like managers or executives have to decide uh, several times uh, during their business day and have um, to make difficult decisions. But I'm talking about really, really difficult decisions. Um, I'm talking about decisions 
where, uh, for instance, the options are quite clear, A, B, C, um, and you have already collected facts and data, but you aren't able for some reason to decide whether to do this or that. Sometimes you're in an inner, well, in a struggle, in an inner conflict, blocked um, and uh, don't know what to do. And for these, these um, special occasions, I have a, a little cool I, a tool I call the, the ethics compass. Because the ethics compass or the compass is a, is a, a nice night me metaphor for me because a compass is a, a tool, an instrument you can use when you have lost your track or your goal and it helps you to get back into the right direction and so this is the reason why i choose this this compass as an example and if you look at a compass you usually see these four letters n e s t for the four directions and uh, in my compass there is for every letter is one direction you can think um in a really tough situation. So let's start with the letter N. N stands for network. So think of your decision. Um, you made your decision. What would your network think about your decision? What will your boss think? What will your colleagues think? What will your wife, your husband, your partner think about your decision? What will your best friend think about it? And the next letter is the letter E and E stands for ethics committee. So imagine your decision is given to an ethics committee afterwards and they have to rate and to prove and to think about your decision what would this ethics committee think of your decision and the next one stands for second time so imagine you have made your decision would it be possible to make it a second time and would it be also still okay to do it in this way because if not if it only would work once this might be a hint for some psychological trick uh, something which only works once but not twice because people might get fooled once but they won't get fooled twice normally this is the reason I, I personally uh, like to do magic tricks um, and there is one rule you don't repeat uh, a magic trick um, at one audience because you don't want to be the trick revealed so um, and if you do it again people would might look at the clue and know what it is about and maybe they will figure out how the trick is done so second time uh, wouldn't wouldn't work uh, with with tricks normally and the w stands for world wide web think of your your decision going viral uh, in uh, the world wide web or think of your decision um, as the uh, top line of a newspaper how would this be would this be embarrassing for you? Would this be a catastrophe or would it be, would it be okay? And so this is uh, something you, you might use for um, later um, difficult decisions because I think that um, because of this strong inner longing for these trustful relationships, Managers and, and companies who, who are able uh, to refer to this, this longing, they will always be ahead of their competitor on a long-term perspective. And uh, this is something which is my message to, to, to managers. 
So, so far, uh, he, my examples here, this little Frank story and this ethics compass um, as, a, as a tool. And uh, I would like to take you now behind the scenes and, and have a look um, about my, my ideas. And I call it uh, the steps to success. This is a flip chart I would use um, if we would have met in person, but uh, I took a picture of this, this flip chart. And it starts for me with the first step or uh, even with step zero. Um, let me see whether I get out of here. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see, I guess, but I will explain. This is my first step. It is the moment when I uh, receive a request. You see the blue guy, this is me with my message and the green guy is the buyer and he has uh, a little little sign there is written um, objective on this sign and this means the, the first step for me is to get in touch with the buyer when I got a request and to get to know what are their objectives what are they aiming for what do they want to achieve by hiring me um, and uh, bringing me in for, for an event? And you see there is also a second sign which is carried behind the back and it is written on the second sign, hidden agenda. And this means that often buyers, um, executives, whoever brings you in, they have also some hidden objectives, which might or must not be, must not be uh, revealed um, to the audience because uh, it would be embarrassing or it's better to not talk about. For instance, um, if they plan to get rid of 10,000 people um, and just um, preparing them for a change, and if you don't know it as a speaker, this might backfire on you. And uh, so for me, it's always important to have a close look um, in, in the, um, the first, first contact uh, or the first contacts to see whether this might be a good fit. And I also remember from my, my own experience um, being very, very quickly with getting to the next step because there was a big company and I feel flattered by the request or I needed the money desperately. And so I was so happy to get the gig that I ne neglected to have a close look at uh, this first step. And sometimes it's better to turn a, a job down um, than to, uh, to take it by all means. So this is my first step. And when I think, okay, now I understand what this is all about. And this is also something which fits to my personality, my story, my message. Then I think of an example or a story I can use in my speech and for this example i used the story of the little frank you see this television set the 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 mom of the little frank and little frank there so this is my story i i uh, choose um for um talking about trust and getting into the emotional level with together with my audience because this is the moment where the magic happens and here's my audience and you see there are the hearts in uh, the um, participants it's about reaching their hearts and connecting with them on a emotional level um, because this is something which is quite important. And for instance, in my, in my um, example, um, I said, um, I, I call this emotional touch points. So I try to uh, create some emotional touch points where my, 
members of the audience can connect. So I said, for instance, you might know it from your own experience um, in business or privately. So there are two chances. Some but he might uh, refer to the business part because he has got experiences in the business part or um, in the private part. And um, I, the next thing I said, maybe as a child, maybe as a grown up or as a mature personality. So there is also a wide range where people can connect. Maybe someone has got experiences as a child, like this little Frank. Maybe someone refers to the story as a parent, um, thinking of, oh, um, I'm also telling white lies to my children in order to stop the discussion and have a quiet life, you know. Um, and uh, sometimes you um, refer to relationships uh, when you were betrayed by your partner or something like that. So this losing trust um, and uh, being uh, aware of, okay, someone, someone betrayed me, this is something almost everybody knows from his or her past from different different parts. So, and this is the moment when when the magic happens, because now it isn't anymore the little Frank or Frank on stage talking about the little Frank in the past, but it's about them. They connect to their own stories. If everything works fine, you never know, but this is the approach. So they are not longer in my example, in my movie, but they are in their own movie. And they are also there emotionally, which is even stronger because they are now connecting with their own emotions. And uh, the question, and we talked about uh, the negotiating higher fees, this wouldn't pay for, let's say, three or five thousand dollars or euros, because just telling a nice story, which might be quite emotionally, um, is not enough. Because this is like going to the movie, watching Titanic. Oh my God, what did we cry at the end? But we wouldn't spend a lot of money on, on, this, on this movie ticket, right? Because we know it's always fiction, it's a movie, and it's not necessarily our reality. So the next step, and I think this is quite, quite um, important, to have a business transfer, to transfer it to the business reality, and to make people think differently. So business transfer, think differently, is something uh, which always should be there because the little story and the emotions, uh, this is just the way to get to the goal. It's not the goal itself. And so um, I did it um, when I said, well, this also happens in business. Um, when someone, for instance, plays trickery or uh, using mind games to get a short term goal. And this is the moment when people in the audience refer with this emotional uh, preparation to their business context. And hopefully they connect to maybe an employee, a colleague, they treat it in a way um, which might be destroying trust or um, at least not being helpful to be trustworthy. And so coming to this 
different thinking is the first step, but even this is not enough for my perspective or for, from, from my perspective, because just thinking differently doesn't need, uh, need uh, to, to mean you act differently also. So uh, the next step is some kind of call to action to act differently. And uh, and this is this is when uh, when I said well uh, maybe in, if you want to um, invest more in trusting relationship maybe starting tomorrow you can ask yourself what could I start uh, doing what can I stop doing and I said uh, my first step is a good approach to um, to refrain from from mind games and manipulation. To, to build a, um, a climate of, of trust. Um, and so there might also be this idea, okay, and from tomorrow on, I will uh, start changing things. And this is the next step where the magic strikes again, um, because I will leave them also with the little how how can i do it if i want to change things how can i do it in my practical um, life in my business life and this is when my magic compass or <laughs> ethic compass um, comes in because this is something um, i um, give them as a tool and the next thing is let me see I've also got a little um, flyer. Let me, let me show it to you. This is the little flyer I've got. And uh, maybe I will get a little bigger here for you. And uh, it says, stay on course. Um, and I say to my audience, well, um, I not only brought you this little tool here, but I also brought you a little little flyer um, you can you can take and you can pin on your corkboard, for instance, because there is only written stay on course, which doesn't mean very much, um, but it's a little reminder. And maybe in two or three months or a year or hopefully no uh, never you might be in a situation where you could use it and maybe you won't remember these letters or uh, the, the the expressions the letters stand for and for this reason um, on the back side uh, i've written for you these um expressions once again you can see it here um in, in the big and of course there is my picture and there is my logo and there is my website on it so um what happens now is that people um are thinking well uh you never know you better take one of these flyers uh, maybe you can use it sometimes and uh, for from my experience in when there is an audience of let's say 500 people i always have to bring thousands of these flyers because people take two or three or even five for their entire family for their colleagues for whatever and i receive years after that often uh, some little picture of a cork board uh, and uh, the 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 guy or the, the 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 lady says well see here is your your flyer still pinned on my cork board i didn't uh, use it so far but it's still there and um, obviously this is a, um, a good way for me to stay in the minds of people even if they forgot about me but maybe they remember my little frank story or remember this ethics uh, compass and they might refer sometimes to the idea of oh there was this psycho guy from wherever was it germany or italy or i don't know this tall 
he told, I, I don't know, ah, but here is this little flyer. And of course, um, I've also got it in, in German. Uh, when I uh, talk in German, this is slightly different from, from the expressions. So to make it fit into this NESW. Um, but it's so inexpensive. Uh, you can you can print these these uh, flyers for almost nothing, and it's something which is really really nice for me to stay in the minds of my audience. So far from my side, and I'm uh, looking forward to um, get to know about your um, comments. Maybe there are questions. Um, let's. Um, open up the discussion. Well, first of all, for me, a virtual clap. Okay, I think that was really brilliant in so many ways. I was, you know, from time to time, I thought like, where is he going with this? But it's, you know, it's been an amazing roadmap you've given. Everyone. Thank you. So I'd like to actually rather give the stage to everyone else, like Doug, Christian, Sheila, and Ivan, and everyone that's with us. Uh, because Frank, you and I, we can always talk, but you know, you're here with us, with our community right now. So I want to, yeah, give everyone else the opportunity to ask whatever you'd like to know more about. Anyone wants to ask something? Just unmute yourself. Yeah, Doug. Okay, unmute yourself and uh, just come in here. So first and foremost, thank you. Great nuggets of nutrition for our speaking platform learning, you mentioned in step two of creating that personal story on an emotional level, how deep in for my situation, because I spoke here a couple of weeks ago on the Leaders Edge program from Southeast Asia on a recorded call and I got feedback from a couple of people that I did not go deep enough in my emotional situation for my experience from suicide. Yeah, thanks uh, for your comment uh, on the one hand and thanks for the great question, Doug. Um, and um, I wish I uh, would know a clever answer to that, <laughs> but um, I think uh, there is always this range in the audience for some uh, members. It's much too heavy We're talking about suicide, for instance. The topic is already overwhelming. And for others, it isn't deep enough. It could be even deeper or deeper or deeper or deeper for what reasons whatsoever. And I think this is something you have to decide for yourself first. How uh, do you feel comfortable with? Um, what is your idea and how emotional uh, would you get? And uh, and you always you always uh, receive Yes and no. For instance, I um, often got two um, kinds of feedback. One is, yes, brilliant, Frank, this is something we need. We need more trust and we need a better culture and we need ethics in business. Great. And the other one is, that's rubbish, Frank. Wake up from your dream. Uh, this wouldn't ever work. We've been in business for Years and years. For instance, I, I wrote I wrote a book about uh, leadership without mind games in German first. Now it's also available in English, but the, the German book. If you uh, look at the um, the comments um, on Amazon, there are only two two uh, kinds. One is one on uh, two uh, stars and five stars. So there are people who are really polite and don't say it's rubbish, but they don't like it. And others are really, really enthusiastic about. And I think this is uh, something um, which is a great topic from my from my perspective. 
which is an important topic dealing with with uh, suicide uh, it's a heavy topic um not everyone is willing to get into this um and i i, I really i really uh think it, you're doing a great job there great any other questions Christiane, that's your opportunity also in Sheila. I could see something, some question in your head. I think, Frank, I'm getting better on psychology, right? I could see something behind her eyes happening. Okay, Christiane, what do you want to know? I think it's an... Um, my mic is on, right? Okay. I think it's an important topic in the world of business because um, since the 70s, there have been so many reorganizations and collective dismissals um that people don't trust managers anymore in the past you had companies especially small companies and family companies and people trusted the manager trusted him to be the leader and then since the 70s there have always been reorganizations and now people don't trust anymore at some point i was at um the, the european boss was coming to brussels to speak and he held a speech and i thought it was nice but my colleague said, what should we believe in all that? So it's very important. I'm glad there are people like you who talk to managers and make them stop and think about ethics because it really doesn't work uh, telling all these lies to people, especially not to people with a higher education. I'm sorry, it's not really a question, but I just wanted to say it's ever so relevant. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Um, uh, I couldn't agree more. And, and I would also go one step further and say, even if you are just looking for a dishwasher in India, um, if you have a job for a dishwasher, and there are several dishwashers queuing up for this job applying, um, and you can pick every day a new one because there are plenty of them. It's even in this case much better to concentrate on hiring one person and building a long lasting relationship so you have someone you can rely on uh, you do not have to train him every day again and uh, on a long term you are much better off so even in in, in this case but uh, of, of obviously um, i agree with you especially in higher education people uh, they are um, also able to, to, to go to the competitor. Uh, they do not have to stay in, in the company because they think, okay, nobody will hire me um, else where. Um, yeah, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Right. So I don't know if Ivan still has a question, but uh, first of all, I think Frank, it was amazing to have you with us today. So first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me. And I, I would like to, to uh, leave you with, with one last thought, if I may. Uh, I already uh, run a little bit over time, but maybe just one quick thought, because I talked about this uh, emotional touch points. Um, and uh, I would like to leave you with, with one thought concerning these emotional touch points, because these emotional touch points, they are uh, like the dots on a ladybug. So if you've got two emotional touch points in your speech or in your program to connect with the audience, this is already nice, but um, even better would be four, because four is more than three. But even better would be to have six or even many, many of them, because these emotional touch points, they will make you shine. <sighs> What a powerful message to end with. Love it, love it. Frank, it was amazing to be here with us. And by the way, uh, you might not know, but Frank actually got a really 
prestigious invite to be on another stage today and he's you know or still yesterday and he said no still to be with us which was amazing thank you thank you thank you so much for being with us and again you know i mean every time we run one of these sessions i take a couple of golden nuggets away for myself so i feel i always like i'm running it for myself but i'm not and i know a lot of you hopefully christiana can you see a thumb up yes and everyone okay happy to know that yeah you took a lot of great golden nuggets away and i know that we have hundreds and hundreds of people in our different communities so frankie will be part of our um, hall of fame obviously and i know a lot of more people will benefit from taking the, these pills of wisdom in and you know again it's really you know i i love your ethical compass i i love the six steps approach it's definitely something i also going to keep asking myself because as you say right i mean these psychological tricks they only serve us when they uplift us, they uplift our audience and they uplift our clients, right? So thank you so much for being on with us. Thank you all, uh, Christiane, Doug, Ivan, Sheila and everyone else for being with us today. And let's rock it and create our magic as speakers with our businesses. Let's all together speak up, scale up and make a bigger impact together in our own ways, okay? Have a lovely time and next month we're going to be back with another amazing guest and again Frank thank you for being with us and hopefully we have you back sometime here as part of the tribe and then also maybe as a guest again at some point okay all yeah. have a fabulous day week and we'll be in touch all the best yeah thanks so much for having me it was my pleasure nice to meet you all bye <laughs>